let's talk about some other stuff here. Uh, I guess of note, like you know, Blaine, I like mentioned it's it's probably hard to take a lot away from Ole Miss scoring seventy three points and beating Mercer um, seventy three to seven. Was it thirty eight to seven at halftime? And um, but kind of went as we expected in terms of Jackson Dart being the guy from the start uh, at quarterback. Uh, but Spencer Sanders got a chance to play too through a couple touchdowns. But I mean, is there anything really to say about Ole Miss other than they did what they were supposed to do? Yeah, I think they found a go-to receiver, a guy outside yep. of uh, Watkins and Trey Harris, Harris. and yeah. and I think that's a big thing for to for Jackson Dart to have somebody because that was really their big question. You know, that they, they lost they lost a guy in the off season they thought was going to be you know really really uh, productive for him and Marshall, and then you know he gets kicked off the team, and then here comes here comes Trey Harris, a transfer from La Tech that comes through there. Uh, and you know nobody was really talking about him tremendously in the off season, but my goodness, uh, he he had himself a game to start off. I believe four touchdowns on the day, so that's a way to start it off right there. And uh, I think that's a big deal. But when it comes down to it, um, Ole Miss is just going to be how does Jackson Dart? Because it looks like predominantly Blake Jackson Dart was the guy who got got most of those snaps early, and, and uh, Spencer Saunders didn't come in until it was well in hand. So it looks like this is going to be Jackson Dart's team to to roll with, and I'll tell you what, I am pretty excited. Last uh, last I saw, Tulane was taking care of business against a pretty mm-hmm. good South Alabama team at home. I'm super excited about that matchup next week in New Orleans uh, uh, against Tulane. That's going to be two good quarterbacks in Jackson Dart and uh, Michael Pratt going at it for each other. So I think we learned that they've got a number one receiver in Trey Harris, and we didn't, you know, other than that, we learned that Mercer is uh, not ready to, to play with ACC teams yet. But, hey, there you go. Who is? Well, like you said, Tulane's up a couple touchdowns midway through the third in that game against South Alabama, and we will have a full preview and uh, our predictions for that game coming up on the channel either Monday or Tuesday. So you guys can – Ole Miss fans, uh, you'll have that to look forward to. But, yeah, that should be a good one. Uh, as well. I was going to mention, too, I forgot to go back to this earlier when you are talking about uh, Harris at Ole Miss. But – I don't know how many times you've ever seen this before, Blaine. And they may have mentioned this. The stat may already be out there. But a guy who catches – got to pull this up again. Um, cause I don't know. Again, if you guys – I assume if you're not an Ole Miss fan, you probably weren't watching this game. That's just my guess. But he catches a touchdown at 14.05 left in the first quarter. Catched another one at 12.26. Catched another one at 11.45. I, I can't imagine there's anyone that's cost three touchdown passes in a span of what is that, um, two minutes and 20 seconds or something like that. That is nuts, right? But I mean, that's how some of these games can go in week one when you have the discrepancy, oh, yeah. right? But that's still. like Calvin Johnson type <laughs> stuff right there. Nuts. Yeah, it's just uh, it's a wild stat. So if you're looking for one of the wildest stats of week one, it's that one for sure. Uh, like you said, Harris goes four touchdowns on the day, but he gets three of them in a span of two minutes and 20 seconds, essentially, to start the game. So 